to Emmanuel Trinity Lutheran Church. Uh, so glad that you're all here today. We are so excited about a special baptism today for Abby Nicole Phelps. And so we are excited to celebrate that with her and her family today. So thank you all for coming and being here today. So we're going to begin our worship with a time of, of uh, prelude so that we can center ourselves and focus on our minds and hearts on worshiping God today. excellent gifts of love that made alive by your spirit we may know goodness and peace through your son Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God now and forever amen let us sing together we all are one in mission
our service with thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God, who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne, through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us Lord and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst. Cleanse our hearts. Wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. So now I'd like to invite uh, the parents and sponsors of Abby to please come forward for the sacrament of baptism. to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? And I'd like the congregation to join me in uh, the responses to the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So, Abby and Nicole, do you want me to hold her hand? This is Abby Nicole Phelps, and her mommy is Brittany, and his dad is <laughs> and her dad is Travis, and her little brother is Jace. And these are her sponsors, Brittany and Steve Johnson. So again, are you ready for this? I'll baptize you in the name of the Father. Spirit. Now I'm going to anoint you for oil. Sign the cross on the forehead. And that's to help connect you with God's Holy Spirit to be with you in your life forever. And now we're going to give her a little hand roll. Yeah. 
out his monkey. Not old, just get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> You're so excited, huh? <laughs> and this is to remember her baptism day and the light of Christ that is shining in me now and forever. So let your light shine so others may see your good works and give glory to your Father. Okay. Now I'm going to walk back here and meet all your brothers and sisters in Christ. And uh, what do you think of them? Huh? Pretty good thoughts, I would say. Um, all the people that love you and that pray for you and help you grow in faith, especially you all. Thank you, precious. So let us welcome Abby. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and mirror God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Okay, and so now we have certificates. Certificate from the sponsors. And um, thank you. Very welcome. Thank you. You can go back to your seats when you're in the world. Today's scripture reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 13, various verses. Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, and Menaean, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. The two of them, sent on their way by the Holy Spirit, went down to Celsia and sailed from there to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. John was with them as their helper. They traveled through the whole island until they came to Paphos. From Paphos, Paul and his companions sailed to Perga in Pamphylia, where John met, left them and returned to Jerusalem. From Perga, they went to Poseidon, Antioch. On the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and sat down. After the reading of the law and the prophets, the leaders of the synagogue sent word to them, saying, Brothers, if you have a word of exhortation for the people, please speak. Standing up, Paul motioned with his hand and said, Fellow Israelites and you Gentiles who worship God, listen to me. The God of the people of Israel shows our ancestors. He made the people prosper during their stay in Egypt. With mighty power, he led them out of that country. For about 40 years, he endured their conduct in the wilderness. And then he overthrew seven nations in Canaan, giving their land to his people as their inheritance. All of this took about 450 years. After this, God gave them judges until the time of Samuel the prophet. Then the people asked for a king, and he gave them Saul, son of Kish, 
of the tribe of Benjamin, who ruled 40 years. After removing Saul, he made David their king. God testified concerning him, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. From this man's descendants, God has brought to Israel the Savior Jesus, who, as he promised, before the coming of Jesus, John preached repentance and baptism to all people of Israel. As John was completing his work, he said, Who do you suppose I am? I am not the one you are looking for, but there is one coming after me whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. Fellow children of Abraham, and you God-fearing Gentiles, it is to us that this message of salvation has been sent. The people of Jerusalem and their rulers did not recognize Jesus. Yet in condemning him, they fulfilled the words of the prophet that are read every Sabbath. Though they found no proper ground for a death sentence, they asked Pilate to have him executed. When they had carried all that was written about him, they took him down from the cross and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead, and for many days he was seen by those who had traveled with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. They are now his witnesses to our people. We tell you the good news, what God promised our ancestors. He has fulfilled for us, their children, by raising up Jesus. As it is written in the second Psalm, you are my son, today I became your father. God raised him from the dead so that he will never be subject to decay. As God has said, I will give you the holy and sure blessings promised to David. So it is also stated elsewhere, you will not let your holy one see decay. Now when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. He was buried with his ancestors and his body decayed. But the one whom God raised from the dead did not decay. Therefore, my friends, I want you to know that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sin is proclaimed to you. Through him, everyone who believes is set free from every sin, a justification you were not able to obtain under the law of Moses. Here ends the reading. Thank you, Becky. You did a good job with all those hard words. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we thank you for your love and grace to us today. You forgive our sins. You give us a fresh start. You bless our lives in so many ways. Fill our hearts with your love today and give us the courage to share your grace with others. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Some years ago, Rick Warren wrote a book called The Purpose Driven Life. And in it, he asked the question, what on earth am I here for? And from our Christian faith, he draws five purposes for our lives. The first one, he says, is you were planned for God's pleasure. You were, then you were formed for God's family. You are created to become like Christ. You are shaped for serving God and you are made for a mission. He writes, you were made for a mission. God is at work in the world and he wants you to join him. This assignment is called your mission. God wants you to have both a ministry in the body of Christ and a mission in the world. Your ministry is your service to believers and your mission is your service to unbelievers. From the very beginning of the church, the followers of Christ have a mission. 
The mission of the first disciples is to go out and tell other people, their Jewish friends and neighbors, that God has sent them a Messiah and his name is Jesus. Of course, they receive mixed reactions to this news. Some people welcome it and accept it wholeheartedly. Others are not so sure, or they reject it. Some are threatened by it and seek to arrest those people who are telling the good news to others. One of those people who reject it is named Saul. And he is vehemently opposed to these people who he thinks are proclaiming a false messiah. So he does his best to arrest them and put them in jail. Saul's on his way to Damascus to arrest more people there. When Jesus appears to him in a blinding light and says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul is then taken to Damascus, where a believer named Ananias comes and prays for him to regain his sight. And when he does, he begins to believe in Jesus Christ. And after this, Saul changes teams and starts playing for Jesus. He become, and he becomes the greatest missionary of the early church. But it isn't easy for him. When he first goes and preaches to the, the synagogue in Damascus, uh, the people want to kill him. So he has to run away from Damascus. He goes to Jerusalem. He gets there, and the apostles don't believe that he's really changed. They're afraid of him. But it takes a man named Barnabas to come alongside of him and say, No, he's okay. He really has changed. And he vouched for Saul. And so finally they accepted him in. But the Jewish people in Jerusalem were against uh, Saul. They were angry with him that he had switched teams. And so they wanted to kill him. So Saul and Barnabas had to flee Jerusalem for their safety. And they went up to Antioch of Syria. And that became their home church. We have a map up there? Yes. Okay. So Antioch of Syria is a very large city of about 100,000 to 300,000 people. It's here on the right side of the map. And there, it was there that uh, the, the followers of Jesus were first called Christians. Christians, Christ followers, people who live like Christ. And Barnabas and Saul are there for over a year, and they teach and, and minister among the people. Saul is a highly educated man. He studied at the University of Tarsus, where he grew up, and he was an expert in the law, so he was a good teacher. The Church of Antioch embraces their mission. God says to tell, tells them, that they are to send Barnabas and Saul on a mission. And so they pray about this and send them off. They go to the island of Cyprus where Barnabas had grown up, so he was familiar with that territory. But then the Holy Spirit also leads them up to what's modern-day Turkey, to Pamphylia and Galatia, the area of Galatia. And uh, we know that Paul wrote... A letter to the churches in Galatia, we have it, the Galatians book in the Bible. So he established a relationship with them there, and whenever they went into the town, they would always go to the synagogue and try to tell the people the good news, both the Jews and the Gentiles who might be gathered there. What is the good news that Saul and Barnabas are telling everybody? They say that Jesus is the Messiah and he fulfills the prophecies and the scriptures of the Old Testament. And they share what those are. And then Saul proclaims that Jesus Christ was crucified and he died, but God raised him to life again. And he appeared to many people, so there's lots of witnesses at this time who actually saw the risen Jesus. 
And he proclaims that those who put their trust in Jesus will be forgiven of all their sins and restored to a right and complete relationship with God like Adam and Eve had before the fall. You see, Jesus cloaks you in righteousness so that when God looks at you, he only sees Jesus reflecting back and not your sinful nature. So it is totally a gift of grace and not anything you can earn by, by doing anything, not even obeying, being obedient to the Ten Commandments. So Saul and Barnabas are delighted that not only do Jewish people respond to this good news and accept it, but Gentiles do also. But we don't have to travel a far distance to be on a mission, to share God's grace with unbelievers. Often a mission will flow out of your daily life. At Synod Assembly this week, we heard a sermon by Pastor Jimmy Schwartz, who served as chaplain at Carroll Lutheran Village in Westminster, Maryland, for 27 years. He shared that on January 18, 2019, he was stopped at a stoplight and was rear-ended by a drunk driver who was going about 50 miles an hour. He was taken to shock trauma in Baltimore, and uh, he had a lot of internal bleeding and was taken to surgery. He prayed like Paul, whether I live or whether I die, I am the Lord's. After about three days, he was stabilized, and he figured that God was going to allow him to live. And he just prayed, God, give me the ability to cope. And several days later, his doctor told him that he was paralyzed from the waist down and would never walk again. He was then taken to Kessler Center for Rehab in New Jersey, the place where Christopher where Reeves went when he had his accident. And Jimmy was there for nine weeks. He said he had to struggle with the fact that the person that he knew himself to be before had died. That person was gone. And he felt like now he was a burden to his wife, and he would never get to do the things with his children and grandchildren that he hoped he might be able to do. He said, I often question whether I would be better off dead. But Bishop Gold, who visited him, told him once, Jimmy, God isn't finished with you yet. In July 2021, two and a half years after the accident, he had his day in court with the woman who injured him and who only got 90 days in jail for it. Jimmy got to face the woman and look into her eyes and tell her directly, the fact that the accident happened can't be changed, but by God's grace, my life goes on filled with hope. I forgive you so that your life may go on as well. His Christ-like behavior in the courtroom had a profound effect on everyone who was there, except the defendant who still lives in her addiction. But Jesus shines through Jimmy. Grace, he says, is not about me, but about God in me, and what God accomplishes in, with, and through me. Grace is what we Lutherans proclaim when we baptize little children. Little children who can't understand what's going on or do anything good to deserve it. It is a free gift, and we can never fully comprehend this gift, no matter how much faith we have, or fully realize how blessed we are to have this gift which lasts for eternity. But we do know it's the most wonderful thing that we have and the most wonderful thing that we can give to other people. You are made for a mission.
to show and tell unbelievers about the grace of God. What opportunities is Christ giving you in your daily life to show God's grace to unbelievers? When you take a risk to share your faith in Jesus Christ with others, you stop relying on your own powers and begin to rely on Christ's power to share the good news. And because you rely on Christ, Christ is able to reach out into that other person's mind or heart and touch them with the grace of God. You and I may never be missionaries like Barnabas and Saul, whose name was changed to Paul. But Christ needs you to be a part of his mission in the world today, to share his grace with everyone you know. May we always be ready and willing to embrace the mission that Christ gives us. Amen. Let us now stand and sing together, We Are Called.
trusting God's promise of new life. We pray for the renewal of the church, the world, and all creation. Send your Holy Spirit upon your church. Awaken us, re renewed commitment to our baptismal promises, to build community, to worship together, to share our faith, to serve others, and to work for justice and peace. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Forgive us for the ways we have caused creation to suffer. Inspire creativity as we explore new ways of reducing our consumption of Earth's resources. Restore forests and waterways. Replenish the habitats of all endangered and threatened species. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Call all nations to the repentance that leads to life. Empower legislators to craft laws reflecting your commandments to love and serve. Bless police officers, firefighters, paramedics, and first responders who put themselves at risk to care for others. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Make your home among us and shelter us from storms of death, mourning, crying, and pain. Draw near to those who weep and to those who are lonely. Restore health and wholeness to all who suffer. Today we pray especially for Russ and Rose Ziegler, Jen Mahoney, Jimmy May, Meg Kramer, Donna Blazer, Bart Lewis, Judy Jones, Paul Herman, David Herman, Matt Davis, Crystal Russell, Ivory Graham, Linnell Thomas, Tina Lobley, Bill Bowers, Bob and Cindy Hiltner, Robert Norris, family and friends of Mike Garner, Savannah Krieger, Tim Addison, Joe Robinson, Ida Smith. For Paula Smith and family on the death of her sister. For Bart Lewis and family on the death of his sister, Lynn Siebenichen. And for those we name aloud or in our hearts now. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We commend these and all of our prayers to you, O God. Come near to us with your saving help, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Now we'd like to have an offering prayer. We are not taking up the offering because of COVID. But uh, there is an offering plate at the back of the church, and we invite you to leave offerings as you leave worship today. But let us say a prayer for our offerings. Blessed are you, O God, creator of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now we will celebrate Holy Communion. So if uh, you would get out the little communion kit that uh, you received when you came to worship. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. To be with them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and light. 
In every age you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time you sent your so chosen servant Jesus to preach the good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples. He said, Take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink. He said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sins. He said, do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say amen. Amen. Please join me in praying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So if you will take, uh, open the section that has the little piece of bread in it. Take out that piece of bread and hold it up. This is the body of Christ given for you. Please open the side that has the juice in it. And raise it up if you are able. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Living God, we give you thanks for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand if you are able to sing, I love to tell the story.
Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace and tell God's story. God's vision is to come down and be with us in a beautiful garden. The first two people reject God's vision and are escorted from paradise. Their decision introduces sin into human life, which keeps us from community with God and one another. Having given us free will, God launches plans to win our hearts and bring us back into a loving relationship with Him. God shapes a brand new nation called Israel, and through this nation God will reveal His presence, power, and desire to win our hearts. Every story of Israel points to the coming of Jesus, who provides a way to be made right with God through faith. Christ enables us to have a personal relationship with God. Everyone who has faith in Christ belongs to a new community called the Church, which is the body of Christ in the world today. So go in peace, tell the story, and be the Church. Thanks be to God.